starting to already say that they're on. Hey everyone, it's Paul Pruitt. If you can hear me or see me, uh, if you can put in today's date. And actually, since this is part two, if you can do me a favor, because uh, some people might be linking into the old, uh, the first one, but if you can hear me, oh, you know what? I have the microphone now. So if you can hear me and see me, uh, if you can go ahead and say hello, uh, and if you can let me know, um, if you can hear and see me again, this is the Prop Photographers um, group uh, series that we're doing this month as far as um, the part two in the series for Lighting uh, 101. So if you can hear me, if you can go ahead and put today's date and put actually if you could reference number two, uh, that lets me know. Uh, that you're online. We're, we're starting a couple minutes ahead of time just to get everything plugged in. Um, make sure that uh, everybody, we're going to probably have a countdown of about five to 10 minutes here just to see people slowly roll in. Um, again, and those of you that are on live, if you do get anything, again, we're starting a little early, but um, just wanted to get plugged in and actually going to work on the computer here a little bit while we're waiting. Um, do we have part two? Do people say part two? Okay, Dave's here. Okay, great, great. Um, so I'm going to um, pull a couple things up on my screen while we're waiting for a couple minutes, just so I know that we have everything plugged in together. Uh, a little tricky part with these uh, webinars is the software uh, that we use. Uh, sometimes when we do part one, part twos, people go to the old link and they don't see what we're actually uh, talking about on the on the live version of the current link. So uh, again, if you're a couple minutes early and you're in, if you can just uh, say hello, uh, that would be great. Uh, let us know that you're listening to part two, uh, Lighting 101 part two. Um, and again, I'm sorry, I'm not making eye contact right now. I'm just gonna pull up a couple things in the background that I can show you in a couple minutes. Uh, as we go through this webinar uh, on um, uh, on our pages and everything here, so if you are if you are in and you do hear me, if you can just let us know that you are listening to part two, uh, and also feel free to tell us uh, where you're from. Um, I know we get a lot of people that get on here from different directions and uh, don't comment directly uh, to us, but it's something if you do have that ability to uh, let us know, please. Uh, I'm gonna turn the volume off on this so that doesn't happen. Pull up a couple past wedding clients so I can actually use their uh, their images that they have on online as examples. So actually, here's a great example of what we don't wanna have happen. <laughs> when a mom takes a picture of the screen and posts <laughs> the images up and they degrade, uh, but Actually, this um, I think this client Amy here has a full album uh, of a recent wedding that I want to share uh, some of the, the pieces. So again, if you are online and are plugged in, please let us know. Just go ahead and um, let us know that you're in the number two class, um, the Lighting 101 uh, Part 2. And I'm going to leave Amy's thing up here. There's going to be a, a few clients. I'm going to show you uh, some some imagery to, to be able to demonstrate a, a few things in, in a little bit here. So we are plugged in. Uh, looks like we have somebody commenting in the Facebook group. Maybe um, you can check in on there and see what they're they're saying there. So again, if you can hear me and see me, if you can let me know. And again, I'm not I'm sorry, I'm not making eye contact right now. We have about five more minutes. We're going to go ahead and get officially started. Um, but I, I wanted to pull and be able to show you guys some uh, behind the scenes stuff as well. Actually, we'll we'll leave this page up. I'll show that in a couple minutes. And let's go ahead and tap into another page here. And let's go to our Melissa's here. That's great. Um, and again, we're going to get started officially in a couple minutes here. Just going to allow everybody to slowly um, come in. So if you are here, if you can hear me, if you can let me know if you can hear us okay and see us okay, 
Um, we do have a very specific microphone that we use here as far as part of our um, our podcast. And the good and bad with it is very directional. So when I'm right on top of it, it sounds great, very crystal clear. In the moment that I walk away um, a little bit, then it, it does get a little dicey there. So uh, we're going to try to keep as close as possible uh, today because I know we got some great feedback uh, from everybody before. And again, while we're waiting, I'm just opening up a couple uh, browsers here so I can show you some stuff uh, in, in a few minutes uh, when, we, when we dive in. The, uh, so again, if you're, if you're on, if you can just let us know uh, that you can hear us okay. Um, had some snow earlier. Uh, the last two days, we weren't sure what we're going to hap have happen. We, we just came back from an, a law firm in Pennsylvania uh, doing a headshot. Uh, session. This is the third time we've been out to this particular law firm, and um, very, very interesting uh, setup. Um, not our preferred method, but it definitely was something that um, got some really great shots, and thankfully they're very, very happy and keep having us come out uh, over and over again. So, um, again, if you can hear us, if you can just let us know, uh, we're gonna get started officially in about three, four minutes here, just to, to allow people to kind of straggle in. Okay, and you're in Melissa's in the Facebook group. Um, so those of you that are in the Prof Photographers Facebook group, if you're uh, leading comments or anything there, we'll we'll be able to dialogue uh, with you if you if you have questions that you want to ask while while in the uh, course itself. So um, again, we're just going to wait a couple more minutes here, and just going to keep talking so you guys know that we are a live. Um, so, uh, again, if you guys, uh, have the ability to, uh, comment, uh, please, uh, send us a message, let us know that you can hear us and everything looks okay. Cause again, technology, um, and what we're using the software that we're using, I just want to make sure it gets through to everybody, uh, properly and just scrolling through anything, uh, coming in yet on, on your end, you look, you look good. Okay. Okay. Good. Oh, you're still loading in. Okay. So again, we're going to go through today is the part two. So I'm going to go through and we're going to talk a lot about the uh, not as exciting um, stuff that everybody always wants to skip. Uh, but it's definitely very, very important information that we need to cover. Uh, if you really want to honestly know about lighting, we have to talk, talk a little bit about metering, about the camera, camera settings, and also a little bit of the science. Uh, I, I am going to try to explain this in a way so that's not overwhelming for everybody. Um, but again, if you're, if you're in, just, just say hello, and we're going to get started in a couple minutes here. Um, and I'm going to go through and let me pull up a couple more things here just to have them up so we'll be able to talk about this uh, properly. And again, if you're on, if you can just get uh, Jeff's in. So, hey, Jeff. Um, and again, I'm just wasting a couple minutes here just to allow people to slowly uh, come into the, into the uh, room here. And there is what I was looking for. So we'll go ahead and open that up. And... So again, if um, if you're in the group, if you can, or on the, on the webinar, if you can just say hello, um, that'll just give us an idea like who, who's in and who, who is not. So uh, we'll be getting started here in a couple minutes. Um, looks like we're right on time. Um, let me go ahead and switch over to a screen share here real quick so we can start properly and let's see here all right we look good okay good all right so who, who's that Adolfo. Adolfo okay great great um, everybody's coming in uh, thanks for some of you participating uh, with leaving um, your messages. We're just going to give one or two more minutes because I know how technology is. Uh, I apologize for those of you that did pop in a little early and, and you're here on time. Um, we just always want to make sure that <clears throat> we have the opportunity because a, a lot of people aren't used to uh, technology and, and logging on 
uh, and you might be on different devices. Now, we are streaming this live uh, here. This will be rebroadcast as well. So for those of you that hit the replay, um, you'll be able to get this information. Keep in mind, this is part of a series, and we'll be talking about that in, in a couple of minutes here. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to be jumping back and forth between the slideshow that you're seeing on your screen right now. At least I hope you guys are seeing the slideshow. Um, you want to double check to make sure that um, everybody's seeing... Yeah, so we're gonna have Melissa pull up on her end to make sure that we, I know that everybody's seeing the actual slideshow itself. So again, we're, we are professional photographers, we're not professional webinar experts. So um, this is something that, you know, we, we work through the bumps and bruises and make sure that uh, everybody can see. What's up? Yes, you need to, you need to go through and, and uh, um, you know what, I'm just gonna click this present to everybody. Um, we're, we're safe. So we'll, we'll, I, I just go ahead and click that extra button. Um, so again, we're going to go ahead and get started here. Um, we'll just wait a moment or two more because I see a lot of people popping in, uh, right now and okay. And we're resharing the link in the Facebook group. So those of you that are on, uh, that are part of the profit photographers, Facebook group, uh, we definitely appreciate the uh, community that we have in there. Uh, we definitely have a no ego, um, you know, leave the ego at the door type attitude and it's something that we were very, very proud of that and we do moderate it as, as much as possible and thankfully you guys help us moderate as well uh, we're, we're definitely not a uh, critique style type type group this is all about sharing it's mainly focused on the business side and, and one thing I, I know a lot of us as far as photographers were we're very focused on lighting and posing and, and all the technical pieces as far as photography is concerned. And, and we find that a lot of void um, in the industry is actually how to acquire business, how to handle client uh, clients when you do have them, how to attract that business, how to nurture it in the relationships and move forward. But but also we we know that at the end of the day, there everybody also is is hungering for the the lighting, the posing, the other things as well. And we're very thankful that that's strong points that we have. Uh, we love to share it with everybody. So, and again, in the future, this this is a four part series for this month. So, those of you that have the opportunity to share this with your friends that are photographers, maybe in your local Facebook groups um, uh, or on emails, or whatever, um, they can catch the part one, which we did go over more of the intro as far as the pieces that you would find in a studio as well as uh, out and about. And today, we're going to be focusing a little bit more. Uh, on the camera settings, the uh, the science behind photography, a little bit about metering as well. Uh, these are definitely condensed training pieces just to give you a glimpse um, and to learn like the high level view uh, of, of these things. Because we, it this stuff can be very, very overwhelming, especially for those that are new to lighting. Uh, and we don't want to scare you off, but also understand that it's like anything in life. Once you understand something, then it's easy. And it's just that little hump getting over. You know, there's, there's a, um, you know, methodology of, of a normal learning course, and that's where you have unconscious incompetence. That's where you don't know what you don't know. <laughs> and then, then sitting, what's that? Yeah, yeah. So if you can, if you can throw out today's date in the uh, podcast, uh, that let us know um, uh, that you're in in the right podcasts. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, we're always doing podcasts. So I'm, I'm saying, pod, but if you're in the, the right webinar, so if you can put part two, that's very very important. If you can just say part two, that lets us know that you're in the right one and that you didn't accidentally. Um, plug into the part one and are not listening to us. So, um, we just want to make sure that that you're in the right one for, for today's episode. So, all right, so what we're going to go ahead and get started. We waited a few minutes, let people in, and I do respect everybody's time. And we really want to make this a very value added uh, piece for everybody that's in diving into lighting it, itself. Now, uh, as always, I'm not going to go in deep uh, with this, but just to give you a little background on my end, uh, if you're going to get a deeper view of this, if you go to part one and, and you get that. So, so I'm not going to waste as much time, but the, the most important thing is just to understand that I learned lighting uh, a little over 20 years ago, uh, back when I uh, very thankfully uh, made a lot of money in, in another world, in the real estate world, and uh, owned uh, many offices and traveled around the United States and, and abroad. And, and I had that expendable income where I mentored off the top uh, fashion glamour editorial photographers, and I would pay them considerable sums to allow me to come in and... and 
and learn off of them. And it's something that is very, um, for, for me, it's important because I'm going to pop back over here. Uh, it's important on my end uh, so you understand that I learned back in the day when everything was analog and not digital, and you had to have these certain tools. You had to know the methodologies. You had to know the science behind all this because it's something that these days, you know, we quickly look at the back of a camera like, oh, okay, does it look right or wrong or whatever? But I'm telling you what, if you can learn these extra little pieces, it'll help separate you from the crowd. It'll help separate you from everybody else because a lot of people are natural light shooters. A lot of people do not know a lot about lighting. And if you can actually take this and you can actually understand what's going on, you're going to, again, you're going to separate yourself from everybody else. You're going to come across more professional because you're going to be more professional. You're going to understand and know what's going on with lighting. And you're not going to you know, have those beads of sweat coming down your face when things aren't working out properly. You're going to understand what's actually happening so you can make the adjustments, make the changes and everything. And a lot of people want to skip over the, the camera settings aspect. They want to skip over the metering. Uh, they want to go right to shooting really cool things. And I've been at conferences. I used to host shootouts for many years. We'd have upwards of 100 plus people at some of our bigger events years ago. And I always felt bad because uh, myself and a couple others that I trained, we would set up these stations and we'd set up the lighting and, and we'd have speed lights and we would have lighting setups and everything. And people would walk into that and there would be a, a great model that, you know, knows professional modeling, knows how to pose, you know, change each, each um, uh, time the, the shutters click and they would rock it out, but the lighting also would be metered and the person would step up and they would slide on a little remote or they would plug into a PC cord uh, years ago and they would just, we would tell them what the camera setting was and they would just go ahead and click off and start taking photos. And I see this in a lot of uh, conferences and, and workshops these days where people go in and really they're just throwing on, they're told what the camera setting is, they click the shutter, they grab this beautiful image and then they go back home and they put up this work on their on their websites and their blogs and on Facebook and everybody's like, wow, this is exciting, you know, and crazy. And I remember a couple of years ago, somebody very specifically uh, a couple of years ago came to one of our um, our uh, shootouts and she did exactly that. So it was a local photographer in our area, an incredible woman. And she she posted those photos online and her church actually contacted her to do everybody's photo in there. And at the time I had a, a, a shared studio where I rented it to other photographers. So she came back in a couple weeks later, was all excited, everything. And then she had what I, what I would, what we call unconscious competence. And that's, or I'm sorry, uh, conscious incompetence. And that's where she rented the studio. She didn't, she didn't pay me to like mentor her or anything like that, but she was there on the shootout day and she got up all these beautiful images and then she showed up uh, that, that day, just a little bit, thankfully, just a little bit ahead of time. Um, I, she rented the lighting. So the lighting was there for her, you know, the, the equipment, the gear, the space and everything was there, but she had this reality jolt. She's like, Oh my goodness, I don't know what I'm doing. You know, like I am here in this moment and I am ready to shoot these people that are paying me. And I put up this work, like I represented it. And, um, she thought I was going to be there hand holding her, you know, throughout the process. And it's like, no, that's not how it works. So, so thank just to help her out. I did like set up a very generic lighting setup that would pull her off for, for headshots. But that's like the reality. Like you go to these workshops and these shootouts and everything like that. And you learn, you know, you're just there clicking off and everything. And then you get home and it's like, you, you put this work out and then you can't duplicate it. And it's like, Ooh, that's, that's like a burn because people are expecting you now to shoot at that level. To, and, and lighting definitely can help you. Understanding light can help us separate you from everybody else. So it's something I learned back in the day where you had to have a light meter. You had to get things you know, before because you couldn't look at the back of a camera. You couldn't cheat your way through and chimp and go, oh, OK, God, I got that. You know, We had Polaroid backs, and that would show the contrast as far as how the light was hitting and everything. But we didn't know. Like We had medium format camera, and you didn't know until like a week, week and a half later when you got the, the Chrome or slides or whatever you were using uh, back from the, the lab to know if you're on point or if you're off. And a lot of that, when you're dealing with Chrome film like that, that's unforgiving. Like if that information's gone, it's gone. There's nothing there you can pull back. And these days we have raw and we can pull things back and all that stuff and we can cheat our way through it a little bit. But I'm going to tell you, 
there's just something to be said for you to have that knowledge, be able to walk into a room, like maybe it's a wedding, maybe it's an engagement session, and you want to pull in that ambient light plus add your light in, and you can just eyeball it. And because you know kind of the technical side a little bit, that you can you can say, you know what, I think I should put in this setting. Boom, boom, boom. Now let me throw in my light. Boom, perfect. Oh, I need to do a slight adjustment. And there's a lot of power in that. Instead of going, Oh my goodness, I don't know what to do. Like, should it, what I, what I, you know, you, you get frustrating. If you, and again, that's when the beads of sweat and nervousness happens because it's not pulling off the way that you want. And I see people go through this all the time, especially when they're in our, our workshops. Uh, like, we've been doing a wedding boot camp for many years, about five or six years now. And um, we do that twice a year. And it's something I see people, they're seeing what I'm doing. And then when they step in to duplicate it, then they get nervous and thank, thankfully it's happening in, inside the, the workshop context, not necessarily like a real live client. And that's the idea is to get you to know enough so that you're not just copying methods, but you're actually, you have the knowledge to make a decision, you know, and that's so powerful to go in like, wow, it's brighter right now. Like we're earlier on, we came back from this headshot session that we just did with the law firm. This is a third time out. And we have to, we're doing a, we're in a small hallway. We're doing the speed light setup um, that we, cause we're like crunched in and we can't bring the big gear in and we have to balance it with the ambient light that's coming into this, this huge glass window. And even today, the light was coming in and out, in and out where there was cloud cover and then hard light, then cloud cover, then hard light. And you have to make adjustments in the moment to, to be able to, you have to know what to do. And that's, scary for a lot of people. So the whole idea is, can I take you through a path? Can I give you something today that's usable that you can start practicing on your own and that you can use it into your world and it can impact your life, which would, you know, your photography world, and then it'll impact into your, your, your lives as well. So let me uh, jump in on here and see if I can screen share so I can take you guys through um, some of the, some of the pieces here that we're going to go through today. So let me present that again. I'm not sure if everybody sees. Um, so we went through this uh, again, housekeeping wise, if you can do me a favor and actually turn your cell phones off, uh, put them on mute, do whatever you take out the distractions, get rid of Facebook, all these other things. Cause it, some, so often I said this last time as well, and I'll say it every single time, we're just in a multitasking world these days and everybody is so focused on 5,000 other things instead of just being focused on exactly what they should be learning in the moment. So if you can turn the distractions off, that would be greatly, you know, that'll impact your world, you know, greatly. Um, so let's go ahead and, okay, so again, today, uh, we are doing the camera settings. This is uh, the second part of the webinar series. Uh, last week, we did do intro to studio lighting. Uh, we had a great discussion on that that went very, very well. We had a lot of incredible feedback. So if some of you are landing on this uh, webinar and you missed out on webinar one, I recommend that you kind of go back and you register for that and you listen through on that end. If you are here today, that's great. We're going to keep moving forward. But again, next week, we'll be covering in-studio setups. So we're gonna actually have live model, uh, probably have Melissa help out uh, modeling, and then we'll probably bring on one or two other people if they're available uh, locally uh, in on that uh, series as well. And then we're gonna follow it up on the following week and do even more. We're gonna do on location just to show you the, the challenges and things we go through with lighting. So you're gonna be able to have the whole scope. We'll show you how to do in-studio stuff as well as out, out of the studio uh, as well uh, this month. So hopefully the, this entire series, you know, us compartmentalizing each of these pieces will allow you to take usable things that you can take into the real world. Uh, it's not all fluff. This is this is real information that you can be able to learn. So one of the pieces that we're going to do with today is to talk about the camera. Now, this is not exciting, classy, fun. I know you want to see you know, posing and lighting and all this other tricky stuff. But if you do not have camera 101, now we're not going to go into camera 101 today, but I am going to cover a couple different pieces because it's so important because it impacts how you're going to take photography, how you're going to take these photos uh, when you're dealing with lighting, when you're dealing with off-camera lighting and everything. So the old joke, as you know, uh, is it, with a camera is P stands for professional. I'm sure you guys heard that. You know, that that's actually program mode, that and like a little green button. And the challenge is, is that when, you, when you're doing off-camera flash, when, you, when you're doing creative lighting or when you want to control things, the camera doesn't know what you're trying to do most times with 
the off-camera lighting. Now, if you're doing in-studio and you have those, those strobes, those mono heads, so, you know, we talked about these things last week, it's going to be very tough because all that is manually set. So you're, you don't want a camera that's set on automatic because it's going to jump all over the place. It's going to try to expose for the ambient light that's in your room. And if you're in a dark uh, situation, you don't want those settings to be jumping all over the place and then you throw in your flash and it overpowers and whites out everything. So one of the keys that you have to do is you really, especially starting off, you want to go into manual. And this is going to scare some of you that are new into lighting because you might be in one of those automatic or semi-automatic uh, modes. Now, in the, the third uh, uh, or the fourth piece that we're going to be doing, actually the third and the fourth, we, we will be doing some uh, speed lights uh, as well as studio lights. So when you tune into those two other uh, webinars, we'll be covering... Uh, how to do TTL, you know, where, where you can actually use your, your uh, speed lights to do uh, a kind of like semi-automatic um, uh, setup as well. But when it comes to the camera right now, though, we want to we stay for what we're doing right now. You have to understand when we're, when we're in the studio, the light quality doesn't change. So we want that to be on, on manual. Now, I'm going to go ahead and flip out of this screen share real quick because we're going to talk a little bit about... Um, ISO and, and camera settings. So now it's not classy stuff. You know, you want a cool model and we want to shoot and have everything cool. But when you have your camera, you need to understand where your settings are. So if, if you don't know right now, like I, I use Canon gear, but I know how to get around on Nikon gear as well um, and other and Sony's and everything. So it's something, it's like driving different cars. You know, they all have a steering wheel. They all have a gas tank. They all have different spots. Uh, they all have a gear shifter it might take you a second or a minute to figure out where it's at and it might function a little different. Hey, you know, on this, on this car, I flip up on this little piece over here and it shifts the gear on another car. It shifts the windshield wipers. So, you know, it might take you a minute to kind of get oriented, but all those pieces are the same. They're all in the cameras. So one of the, the biggest things is you want to make sure that that little oh, here, that little button is on manual to begin with, because we want to control every, every element that we have. Now, I'm not sure if you if you're not good at, at understanding manual settings. That's that's something that we can take a deeper dive in another piece, another time. But you have to understand that when you're dealing with studio or when you're doing lighting, as long as there's not clouds coming in and out and and there's variables that are happening, because maybe you would do something semi-automatic like uh, aperture priority or uh, or shutter priority. But for for right now, if the light quality is the same all the time. There's nothing changing. You don't need auto. You need you need to dial in on the right exposure, but it's something that you don't need auto because nothing is jumping around, especially when it comes to in-studio lighting. You do not need anything on auto because everything's consistent. The color of the light's consistent. The your flashing off is consistent, those things. Now, I understand we're going to talk some, about some very technical things today, but I'm going to try. There's so many YouTube videos out there in the world that I'll have the 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 gear side that you know the the tech high technical side i'm going to show you that high technical side like a couple uh diagrams and everything but i'm going to try to tell you and teach you in such layman terms so you understand it doesn't overwhelm you because this is where the people everybody starts glazing over like oh i don't want to do with this <laughs> um and it, it but this is where if you learn it and you understand at least understand what's going on that's so so important and really that's where we want to focus everything so the Understand, and those of you, again, this is the, the best analogy that I can give you is back in the day, before digital, we would go into a, you know, into a store or go into a camera shop and we would buy different speeds film. So we would buy like a hundred speed film and that would be a hundred ISO. Now, back in the day, which were, we called it ASA, which was the, the American standard, but uh, there's the international standard. So it's ISO. So that's, that's going to be how sensitive is the film back in the day that we would get. So if we knew we were outside and it's bright sunlight like it is today, like right now, it's like, okay, I need 100 speed because that's very, very fine grain. Like it's, it's just like, mm, it's crisp, you know, and it's very, <clears throat> it's not as light sensitive. So it's got these little specks on the emulsion on, on the negative. So what will happen is when I grab that photo, I can be, I need to be in a high light situation and I'm going to get, 
because the grain is so thin, I'm gonna get this beautiful sharp image. And it's the same thing with digital these days. So if you have 100 or some of you that are Nikon shooters, you start at 200 ISO, that's gonna be your finest grain possible in a way. You know, we call it noise these days, but it, it's something that you're gonna have the, the best sharpest image, you know, quality image at that. But you're gonna have to have a lot of light when you do that. Now, if you're in a low light situation, we might have to add flash in order to get that. But maybe you are in a low light situation and you want to pull in the ambient light. Like right now it's bright around me, but it could be like in the middle of the night and I want to show this room and turn on some lights on in the background. So now maybe I had to bump up that ISO. So again, back in the day, if we were shooting like indoors, but the light was kind of fair, we would get 400 speed film. And then if it was like really dark, we were shooting a birthday or something in the afternoon, we would get 800 speed film. Uh, and those above that, you would have to go to a, a pro shop and you would get like 1600 speed film. And that's where it was really, really sensitive film. Uh, but the specs in it were really, because again, it just needed a little bit of light to hit it but it would never be crisp. It would always have that grainy look. And, and these days, you know, we look at grain um, and it has more of a, what we call noise these days because all the information's kind of scattered. Thankfully, a lot of the uh, newer cameras out and also the software gets rid of some of that. So it takes some of that you know, craziness out of there. But I tell you, I'm still, I, I love the grain feel. And, and I know a lot of people that are out there, they love that, that vibe, that feel still in a lower light situation, um, just to have that, it just feels real, especially when you convert it to black and white, it looks beautiful. Um, but it's just something that if your camera is limited, you might not be able to bump that ISO that high. You, you might be stopping at 800 because you have an entry level camera and, and the manufacturers purposely keep that technology down to force you to upgrade. Uh, it probably doesn't cost them any more or any less to allow that sensor to be that much better but they make it so that we have to kind of ladder ourselves up and you're gonna invest more to get those extra little bells and whistles. So that's just one of the things is the ISO that we have to recognize. We're gonna use ISO in, in the sense that, you know, do we want that, that fine, that, that really tweaked out image that's gonna be tight and sharp? Uh, or are we in a low light situation where we have to purposely push the camera to bump that ISO up higher so that we can pull in more information typically in in the environment that we want to pull into an image because it's low light now the next step that we're going to look at though is aperture so when you have your lenses let me just grab one so here's a 7200 7, but um you know inside you're going to have the aperture that's in there now with that this is again this is not exciting um for some of you but it, it's something that you need to understand that Think about, and this is the best analogy I've always been able to give people with that don't understand aperture in general. Think about if you've ever gone to the eye doctor and you've gotten your eyes dilated uh, because they want to look inside and make sure that everything's okay. But the moment that your eye gets dilated and it gets pulled, you know, as extreme as it can, so as wide open as it can, you'll hear photographers always talk about shooting wide open. So you, you're told in advance of this, if you're going to have this happen, two things are gonna happen. They're gonna give these little, you know, temporary glasses to put on to cut down the sun because your eye, you know, you're, you're, you're so dilated, you're letting so much light in, it hurts. You know, it, it hurts really bad. So you're letting a lot of light in, but also you can't drive because you have this limited depth of field. So as you get wider, the depth of field shrinks up. Now this is important to know because when you're doing, um, when you're in studio, you have the decision in that moment, you can decide right now, hmm, do I want like maybe have a good lens where you can go to two eight or you can go to one two, depending on what, what type of lenses that you have. You might have a kit lens that only goes to five six. Now, I'm not gonna go into full blown aperture discussion right now, but understand that the smaller the number, like 1.2, 1 1.8, 2 0, you know, you know, all those. Um, that means you know, think about it like being dilated. Like the wider you go, the more light you're allowing in. So there's always that delicate balance. We're not going to go through the whole triangle thing today, but um, and giving and taking. But at least in the studio, we can control how much light is being flashed onto the people. Okay. So since we're controlling the light, we can dial it up and dial it down depending on the, on the type of uh, flash that you have. So here's the thing you want to think about, though. What do you do? You have something in the background, like here. Maybe I want to take all this out, see all this background stuff, and I'm going to take a photo of somebody. It could even be an environmental where I, I need to focus here, but I want all that to be blurry. So you focus on me, not like what you see here in the video, 
where all that's in focus back there. And again, that's the opposite. So this this camera that's on this on this webcam is really dialed down because there's so much light that's in here. So what's happening? There's so much light in here. It has a little aperture inside as well, and it's pulling all the way down, almost like a pin. And with that, it's creating this larger depth of field where you can see everything back here. The, the, the screen's reversed, so this is weird for me. Um, the er, Everything back here, you can almost see it just as in focus as, as me. But if I was at one, two, all this would be blurry. It would be beautiful bokeh in the background. And it's something that a lot of us are looking for that. We're looking to isolate. So it's something that what you want to do, and you had the decision now, we were just uh, uh, sh photographing attorneys earlier on in the environment. I had the 7200 on. I'm pressed up against the door. Uh, I should have had Melissa do a behind the scenes of it. And what happened is these people are only maybe like 10 feet away or so. So I have barely have a zoom aspect to it. I'm like all the way as wide as possible, but I need to get this. I need to compress this window when I zoom in uh, that's behind them. So that's the, the beauty of this is that when you zoom in on a 7200, it will compress that blurred background. It'll pull it in. It'll look closer. So not only is it out of focus, but it seems, you know, everything that's far away seems bigger. So whenever you shoot a wider, like this is a wide angle um, uh, piece, you know, the, this video. So you're seeing all this extra information here and here. Uh, but if I was shooting a 7200, it'd be here. And then all this in the background would look like it was right behind my head if I zoomed it in. So that, that depth of field and the focal length, that, that makes a huge difference as far as isolating uh, as well. But when it comes to the depth of field, that 2.8, you want to think about it. If you have a group of people, we just photographed a company, Bancorp, uh, a week or so ago, um, and they had a group of people. So if I was a 2.8, it might be cool for an individual person. And you got to be careful because sometimes when you're zooming in, you might get the eyes in focus and maybe the nose is out of focus. That's a little dangerous. Now, sometimes creatively wise, you want that. You want that limited depth of field. But a lot of our headshots, we, we photographed because people want that clean. They're not looking for the artsy look and if we're in the studio in a background. If it's a solid background, especially, uh, we don't have to worry about the blurring effect. And we're going to go through all this. We're going to show it live to you uh, in the next uh, in the next webinars as well. So you'll be able to see this real. But we have to build the foundation right now so you understand what we're doing. That we normally do five, six, or F eight. Now we had this group uh, with the Bank Corp uh, last week that we photographed. And there was I think eight people, and we had to stack them, you know, because they how they were going to use this image and everything like that. We had to we had to put people very specifically, you know, and and we'll go into posing another time uh, to do like the triangle effects and everything. But but what happened? is that if I was at 2.8, the people in the first row would be in focus and the people in the back row would have been totally out of focus. So you know, you have to be careful. Again, we can walk in and because we're controlling the light, we can make a determination in advance how much depth of field do we want to have because we're going to make a decision and dial that into the camera before we take a photo. So when you walk in, you figure out your ISO and because you're controlling light, especially if you're in a studio, you're most likely going to be at your lowest ISO that you have, 100, 200 ISO. And then from there, you're going to look at the, the aperture and you're going to make a determination, like how much depth of field do I want to have? And once you dial that in, now it's all about controlling your lights and bringing them up or bringing them down in order for you to be able to figure out, you know, what's balanced with that. We're going to talk about metering in a second. So besides that, though, you have this other aspect of your camera that controls how much light comes in, and that's the shutter speed. Now, with the shutter speed, the one thing you want to keep in mind is when you're in the studio and most strobes pop off, and we're not going to get into highly technical because I can really confuse you guys. There's what's called a T1 and a T2, and that's the spike of a, a arc of how how long it's flashing. Don't worry about all that. What what it is, and that 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 makes the the geeky guys really sound cool when they start rattling off how how the duration of how long it, what you want to keep in mind is that the typical strobe fires off in less than five hundredths of a second. So it does not matter what your shutter speed is because when you dial in all your settings and you're in a controlled light situation and you're in a studio environment, if you're controlling all the light, when you pop off that, that flash, what's going to happen, that flash is going to come on and, and disappear, you know, faster than, um, than the ambient light that's in the room. So what happens is if you're at, you know, uh, five hundredths of a second, unless you're uh, doing some more advanced things, which we'll talk about another time, you're not going to see the flash because your, your shutter has to go slower. We're going to talk about um, uh, sync speed here in a second. 
all of our cameras have a have a, a limitation uh, as far as how fast our shutter will communicate with an external device. So what will happen is you'll see that most of the time, most uh, photographers that are doing studio strobes are going to be right around 1 25th of a second to 1 60th of a second. That's a safe range because you have to keep in mind, since that flash is controlling everything uh, in a studio environment, nothing else exists. Like if I, and we're going to show this to you next week, that if I dial in all my settings, 100 ISO, F8, I'm going to do a headshot session. I can do it in this light and take a photo 1 25th of a second and it's going to look pitch black in the photo, even though you're seeing here visually, you're seeing all this information, it's because the camera is purposely dialed in at what doesn't exist. And when we pop that off at 100 ISO, uh, F8, because again, now we're, we're dialing down that aperture, we're eliminating, we're underexposing the image on purpose as far as the ambient world. And what happens is now we're controlling all the light. We can do anything we wanna do. And you're gonna see that live next next um, uh, part of the series. So. What you want to do is determine your your um, your f stop in advance, and that also helps cut the cut the light, as as you know. But the the shutter speed does not have to be more than uh, this is in studio. It doesn't have to be more than one twenty fifth to the one sixtieth, which then flows me into the next part. Okay, that now I can show you graphs and and have I rather do a talking head. So I hope you guys are okay with that. Uh, but it's something that. Uh, each of our cameras, we have a limitation. We have a sync speed limitation. So look up your camera. It's probably going to be right around 200th of a second to 250th of a second. And that sync speed uh, limitation is going to force you, in a lot of cases, to keep your, your shutter speed under that amount to begin with. Now, there's exceptions to this rule. There are higher end pieces. There are other, there are other we're not going to get in today high, into high speed sync. Um, which would just confuse people at this point in time. We will cover it in a different context in the future, but right now it's something that to understand that the most of the limitations that you guys have is you need to understand at least that the high speed uh, or the, the sync speed on your camera is, is limited. So you don't want to go above that, especially in a studio, you don't need to. Now, when you start slowing down the shutter and you start allowing more light to come in, this is where you might make that decision to slow it down, maybe you're at a uh, cocktail hour or a, a wedding reception where we do want to pull in the ambient light, where we do want to pull in different pieces. Maybe you have your camera on a tripod and you're trying to do a two or three second exposure so that you can have you know, car lights going by, but you still want to pop off a flash on somebody that's physically there. Keep in mind, the person's going to be visible pop in less than five hundredths of a second. So you can freeze time on them and then have them walk out of the scene and then for the two seconds or three seconds it has the car streaming by and you have all that we'll we'll do this in the future with some lighting tricks and some fun things uh, that we do um, from time to time in, in different uh, sessions that we do uh, it'll be fun to show you guys uh, the creative lighting uh, pieces so but for today it's all about more of the technical part that you, what i want you to understand i'm going to go back into a screen share so i can um show some of this uh, to you a little bit. Um, I think that's sharing now. So with with the camera, again, we did the ISO, we talked about aperture, the shutter speed and sync speed. So again, right around 125th of a second to 160th of a second. Uh, I keep mine at 125th all the time, unless I'm like today, we had to pull in that, that light uh, behind the people. Uh, in the atrium that we were. So I had to put a different camera setting in in order to do that. And we're actually gonna show you almost a, that exact ex same example uh, in the fourth part of our series uh, on location um, that lighting that I think you guys will love love that. But again, just understand your limitations. Because if you, if you don't, if you ever take a photo where, you, where you're using flash and you took your camera, uh, maybe it's in the middle of the day and it's really bright outside, and you're taking a photo and you don't understand why there's a hard line right in the middle of your photo and half of that is underexposed. One part of it's properly exposed and the other part's half exposed. And that's because you're going above the sync speed limitation of your, of your camera. And you need, you need to understand um, that your cameras do have limitations. Now, there's some exceptions out there. There's some of you that do have mirrorless cameras, but we're not gonna dive into that today. Um, so here's a little cool infograph um, that a, that a, was able to locate 
and um, it just definitely demonstrates um, those of you that do camera 101 we're not going to dive deep into this but it definitely shows you if you look down at the bottom the ISO where uh, not too many people push their camera to the 50 but you need it'll be underexposed like if you don't have a lot of light like you need a lot of light but as, as you go up as you see in this example 20 5,600 uh, high sensitivity, but you're gonna get that grainy, that 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 really messy, noisy look. Um, now, some of the higher end cameras again can handle that, and it looks like a really nice grain. But some of the entry level cameras, they're gonna just look like crap. They're gonna they're gonna look horrible. Um, it's gonna have a lot of uh, nasty looking noise in there of all this variations of color, and, and it's not gonna look like a usable image. Now, also understand the other aspect that controls is that shutter speed. So of course, as you slow down the shutter, it's going to potentially introduce blur, which we are gonna get creative with that. We do some fun light trail things like we do in, um, in our engagement sessions that we do sometimes as well as in our weddings uh, where we purposely, maybe it's like a nightclub vibe that the everybody's on the dance floor dancing and we wanna purposely do some light trails of the ambient light in the room uh, and play around with that. But um, again, the, so the, the faster the shutter speed, uh, it's going to freeze movement, but keep in mind that right around that 125th to uh, uh, 160th to 125th range is going to be plenty enough for you uh, in most cases uh, for in-studio uh, work. And, and again, that, that depth of field. So the smaller that hole is, the smaller the aperture, the bigger the number. It's going to let less light in, but it's going to have more depth of field. You're going to see more in focus when you have that thing wide open, like you see here with the, the 1.4. Uh, aperture it's wide wide open again the, the best analogy I can give is just think about when you get your eyes dilated um, that gives you the, the 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 vibe as far as what happens and again when you're looking at studio when you're in studio and you're controlling the light when you're using those strobes keep in mind that you walk in and you make a determination right out the gate since you you'll know the power of your lighting and some of you might have constant light maybe it's only so powerful maybe you're gonna have to bump up the ISO in order to get the show up uh, and you know that going in so maybe you know to get the the 125th or you know, wherever where you so you're not camera shaking that's gonna inf impact the other aspects as well now let's talk a, also right now about white balance okay so in your camera Get it, I'm telling you right now, get it off of auto white balance. This is going to be a struggle for some of you. But if I went outside today and took a photo and I put you and your your friends uh, right next to each other and I took a photo of you and, and right behind our house, uh, we have a little berm. We have this little hill and uh, it's all green. Um, it's it's kind of white right now because of the snow, but, it, but it's all green. And what happens is the camera would see that green and it would think there was a green tint in the image and in auto white balance It would shift the color and everybody's skin tones would be off and then maybe you're in front of bridesmaids and they all have hot red Outfits or pinks outfits or something like that and you coming in tight and you grab that image and you're in auto white balance and all of a sudden it picks up that hot pink or that red in there and it's the dominant color in there and it thinks oh there's a color ca cast in this image let's shift this to a different uh tone you know but what's interesting is the the color of light typically depending on if now if you're walking from one room maybe i'm outside one moment and then i walk inside into a reception and there's tungsten lighting boom there's this different light color all of a sudden so that would that would be valid but here's a um, Here's a couple different uh, little infographs just to show you. So whenever you hear people online talking about, oh, things look cooler, uh, that's that's you're looking in the direction as far as like daylight, uh, an overcast sky would be considered uh, very blue, very, very um, going almost into the violets, the purples direction. And those that are like candlelight or incandescent light, you're gonna you're gonna hear people reference the, that color light more. Uh, as warmer. Now, this is interesting to look at because on the left here, you're going to see these are actually Kelvin temperatures, and this is going to confuse some of you. Um, and Kelvin readings actually is is a science reading in general. It, it's not just what we use in in photography. You can dial this stuff in. There's also presets in your cameras to get kind of sort of close to it. But um, you have to understand there's there's ways to to use this to your advantage as well as to uh, get creative with it but I, I see a lot of people making mistakes all the time where they don't take the time to understand how to adjust the camera settings uh, in their camera and or they're just looking to, to fix it later on um, 
here's a from a light manufacturer this this is interesting because they actually sell these different like led lights and it shows how on their end how the the color emits it's the same light but just at different color temperatures how the color of that light shifts uh into into different zones but specifically focused on the first two up or levels there you'll see how you go from a very yellow orange direction into a blue purple violet tone depending on where it is that's the same thing um, when we're dealing in the real world so let me let me come out real quick just so i can come out of the, the screen um so you have to understand that like right now i'm in shade there's a cer certain color of light that's happening if i went into one of the in our to the inside rooms of our house and flicked on the incandescent light that's in there that tungsten light that has that's probably right around 32 34 100 kelvin it's very it's like yellow orange okay now what you'll learn uh later on let me see if i can grab um so like when we go in, we want to balance the light. And I know some of you are struggling with um, doing event photography and doing uh, weddings and, and different events where you walk into a room and the light from your flash, you're going to hit the person and they, they kind of sort of look good. Sometimes they maybe look a little on the blue side, but then the rest of the room inside that ballroom or, or that, that space that you're in, it all turns yellow. It all turns orange, you know, and, and, you might want that effect, but in, in a lot of cases, you're looking at these pro photographers and you're seeing like, wow, this is, how in the world did they get all the light in the room to be white? And the trick is they're actually balancing that light. They're balancing the light that's going on behind them that's in the room. So if I was in a ballroom and all that was that incandescent light and it was very yellow, orange, you know, we, we're gonna invest in, and I'm gonna show you these, but we can't go too deep today, but I don't wanna, but, um. We get CTO gels. Can you see that? See how that color is? So that's a white door back there because it's balanced for that. But uh, I hold this up and you can see that it's that it's has like an orange look to it. CTO stands for color temperature orange. So in situations, if you think about it, if we were in a room and it was a ballroom and it had all that incandescent light in here and it was all that very warm light, if I pop this right onto my flash, so this is the MagMod system, uh, uh, my buddy Spencer, uh, invented uh, the MagMod system. So, so if I just pop that right on, I just took this from, now keep in mind, this is what's called daylight balance right now. So this is 5,600 Kelvin or approximately right around 5,600 Kelvin. So this is very white and it's very equal, very similar to you know what's going on high noon uh, during the day. But if I pop this on, I just shifted that color. So if I took a photo of me right now, boom, you know, this would throw a very orange light onto me because it's now, this is a full cut of CTO. So it, so it, it takes it from, um, from daylight balance, it takes it to tungsten. Now you can do it in different t intensities. Maybe the room that you're in is not, you know, the, they dialed the lights up or down and maybe that makes it a little bit warmer in there, a little bit less, maybe you have to stack. So maybe we have more than one and we stack and maybe we need two cuts. These actually come in different degrees, so that it could be one third or one um, half cut. Uh, they go in halves. Uh, they break it. Boom, boom, boom. So one eighth, one one fourth, one one half. Now you might go into a room that has fluorescent in it, and that actually emits, depending on the, the color temperature, it's actually a slightly green uh, tint. So maybe you need to shift in that range. Now this is just for the speed lights. So. We, we purposely shift light all the time in bigger environment, uh, bigger situations as well. So we actually have like, these are called CTB gels. These are color temperature blue. So they go in different varying degrees because maybe we need, it's too blue in a room or, or may, maybe we're, we're gonna put these, we can do this two different ways. I can take this and there's a lot of tungsten light. I can actually wrap tungsten bulbs with this and it takes it into daylight balance. Or I can do the reverse and put this on our lighting. Uh, maybe you have tungsten lights uh, that you have and you're trying to color correct it for the room. You can actually put these on your lights and bring in it, the blue being pushed through. Uh, or you know, yeah, that tungsten bulb and it's being pushed through with a, a full cut of CTB, color temperature blue you're now gonna daylight balance that light that you have. So it sounds complicated. It is until the moment that you understand what's going on. And then once you understand it, boom, it's it's cake, it's easy. But then you can do cool things later on. And that's something that we'll, we'll show you um, in number three or number four uh, of the series where you can actually take purposely, I can purposely put this on 
my my and use this as my key light you know this color and then purposely shift the color of the real world into a whole different color because i know some of you you're on that auto white balance all the time and you accidentally come up with a blue image you accidentally come up with a green image you accidentally come up with an orange image and that's because either and we see this on our iphones all the time too um where it read the color wrong and then boom it throws in and it color shift your image now think you could do that on purpose shift the world blue maybe you have these gray skies out today and you're like oh this looks like crap in camera you can purposely shift the white balance into the incorrect white balance to push that gray sky into blue but then bring in the 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 balanced light from your camera to hit the people and they look beautiful they look pure white and the world itself shifts into a different color it's not even a photoshop trick or anything it's totally in camera totally separates you from everybody else when you can do these type of things so you want to look at later on we're going to invest in uh some color correcting um pieces so i'm going to take you into the next step here let me go back to a screen share um give me a second here and let me start that all right so the next piece i'm going to talk to you for a couple minutes is going to be about your flash meter now there's metering inside the camera which when you're dealing with um when you're dealing with in studio stuff you don't want to rely on in camera because it's grabbing it's metering what is ambient right now it's not going off of what's happening in the um the real situation in the real world now I'm gonna go ahead and reach down and grab this and come back to you guys here in a second. Give me a second. Of course, uh, I did not have that prop properly prepped up. Um, let, me, let me just make sure. So a couple things we're gonna talk about real quick um, with light metering is the settings itself, how to properly uh, meter, and some of the common mistakes that I see. now. We're not going to spend a lot of time on this, but I'm just going to uh, show you real quick. So here's here's a light meter that I have here. Um, there's different types of meters. We're not going to go into uh, there's there's a spot meter and there's other types. I just want to. This is most likely what you're going to work with. You're going to get one of these um, incident meters, and with this, this actually ha has a recess bulb, so I can focus wherever that light's coming from. I can focus now. Um, this is like having a calculator. So this is this is a trick, okay? You, do, if anything, per, invest in one of these. And just by having one of these, when you're working with a client, you're metering light. You would definitely want to know how to use it. But I'm going to tell you what: just by having a meter and by using it, they only see this thing on TV. You would totally separate yourself from everybody else that they've ever worked with because you're actually going up and testing and doing light. Now, what I love about this: sometimes I'm by myself. I can actually set up a headshot and I can meter all my lights and what they're going to do before a physical person sits in the seat. So that way I'm more respective or respectful to that that's coming. That by the time they sit in the seat, I already know what my light's going to do. I already know it's going to come across really great because I'm metering it ahead of time. Now, you always point the, the meter. This is one of the common mistakes because people will think they have to point it from the camera point of view, but this is. Uh, an incident meter, which means it's reading the light from the, the source. So where it's going to impact. So if somebody's standing right here, I want to bring it right where they're at. And I want to get the impact of that light. Like, where is that light? So there's a rim light coming from the back. I want to put it over there and get how it's going to impact and create that rim light, that hair light. I'm going to go to the background and push it up, you know, right against the background and, and read that light. Now, I normally read light in uh, individually so i want to know what my background light's doing i want to know what the key light's doing keep in mind and we're going to talk about this next two summer we're, we separate so that you actually have the ability with that that space you're going to be able to see uh what's going on with each individual light and we're going to slowly layer that light in and we'll be doing that over the next couple uh webinars as well so but with with this what I want you to, to just keep in mind though, is that just by having one is gonna separate you from everybody else. So there's a physical, you know, take like uh, like doctors. When doctors prescribe you or where they tell you, like you you have a certain condition or something when you come in, they give you some long Latin word that nobody knows what it is except them. And that makes them have a perceived value to it. But really they could just be saying, oh, you have dry skin. But they give you some big advanced word and it gives them perceived um, you know, credibility and value because they know that word. And you're like, oh my goodness, I have this condition. Really, they're just saying you have dry skin. So with, with this, it's a perceived value as well, that when you're there and you can plug in and you can 
meter ahead of time. Now I do see, here, here's the concern I have. I do see some people are jumping in, like bigger numbers of people are jumping in right now. And if you are just getting into the group, uh, we actually started at one o'clock, uh, not two o'clock. And those of you are on this replay, you'll, you'll get different times. So I apologize that we might be transitioning here pretty soon. And if you missed out on this, in just a few minutes, you'll be able to watch the replay. You're just going to have to refresh and watch the replay. So I do apologize for any confusion that this made because we, we had scripting errors. And we had to create two uh, different links originally. Um, and I think we're getting some people popping on that uh, are just tuning in now and I, and I apologize about because I'm watching the, the viewer numbers go up dramatically right now. So I apologize for those of you that are just popping in now and missed uh, the, bulk, the bulk of this. So uh, so in about an hour, you'll be able to watch the replay anytime you want. So with, with this though, what I want you to do is uh, by purchasing one of these, and this is a newer one, I also have an older one. I, we keep one in the bag. So when we go on location, we have one and I keep one in the in-home studio. Um, all the time, uh, just so it's there, so we never have an issue where, where it's located. But you need to understand that this is gonna, it's like a calculator, you're gonna, it's like doing algebra, but it gives you the answer. So uh, in here, you know, you're gonna put in your ISO. So again, we already can establish what that ISO is. We're gonna put in our, um, our shutter speed that we have. Like I said, I always put it, you can probably barely see the 125th in there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop off the light so that this, if you have constant light, then there's a setting in here. You can just click and it'll automatically read the constant light that's going on. Um, then there's one in here that that's for strobes. It's waiting for a flash to happen. You can get the advanced ones that actually had the pocket wizard uh, uh, piece inside. This one actually this is the one that has it, but it doesn't physically have that, that, that module inside of it. Um, so I hold it in my hand and I pop off the strobe, you know, at the direction that it's impacting and that's going to give me the light reading. So then I'm able to go over and adjust the light up, adjust it down to get the impact that I want. So if I want F8 and it's popping off really hot and it's at F16, then I know I have to take that thing down a couple stops. So I, I know that I'm going to take it, take the power down because most of the strobes out there do have levels where you can take them up and down and you're going to control that. So what you want to do is at least having this ahead of time before a client sits down, you'll be able to meet her ahead of time. So when that person sits, you might do a little tweaking, maybe had the rim light a little too hot and the people came because you did with your hair, like my hair is darker. Maybe somebody that's blonde hair stepped in and it'll just bleach out their hair and it was a little too hot. You might dial it down a little, but I'm telling you, there's a lot of power. It's you, re, like, again, we do a lot of professionals. So, you know, attorney steps in. We had an attorney earlier on today. She was like, sorry, I'm five minutes late. I just got off a call. How, how long is this going to be? Because I have to leave immediately. And it's like, boom, if I had to sit there and, and play around with the lighting the entire time to get it right, I just disrespected her time, you know, and, and we're getting paid a lot of money to go in there and get it done. So we want to, we always meet her light ahead of time. Boom, we have it there and we move on. So what we want to do is meet her the light and also so with that we're gonna when we pop it off it'll tell us like here it says the last reading was um 80 and five tenths so that means that i would have wanted to dial if i was going for 80 uh the einsteins that we have the paul buff einsteins we just click the down button uh five times and it's almost exactly one tenth of a stop every time you click up or down. So we go and adjust that, then meter it again, boom, okay, we're solid, we're on. So when that person comes in, we have the perfect exposure right then and there. Now, so I do recommend that you do get a, a light meter um, and because when you're dealing with professional uh, headshots and, and portraits and everything, you just wanna make sure before the people walk in the door, boom, the light is perfect, it's on. There might be the slow, there's little tweak adjustments that you wanna do, but uh, this is gonna separate you from the crowd. It's a small investment to make. You can find these on, um, and they just read light. So even though you get some of the cool new ones that have the wireless triggers inside of them, you can get one most likely from about 10 years ago. That's what my other light me. They read light, they do the same thing. There, there's not only so much that they've improved on over time, um, but it's just something that we'll go into detail and I'll show you next week with an in-studio setup, how I'm gonna meter that light in the next webinar uh, that, that we have. Uh, but just make sure that you invest into uh, a light meter because you can't, when you're doing off camera, mm -hmm. Um, when you're doing studio type stuff, you, you can't rely, un unless you're doing uh, hot lights, that constant light we were talking about last, last webinar, you, you're, not, you're not seeing in the camera, you're not, you can't use the meter in the camera 
uh, because it's not reading off what's going to happen. Like that flash is going to happen after that. Um, so that was that that piece there. Now let me transition real quick to uh, coming back to the screen share. Okay. And um, I'm going to talk about this real quick, but I don't want to confuse you guys too much today. But there's another piece if I didn't talk about the law of the inverse square, uh, you would, uh, I would not be doing you justice on this. Now, I'm going to talk about this looks really confusing. Um, this is just an infograph that I found online that, that kind of illustrates uh, the piece. But what you have to understand is that when when you move, uh, the quality of light changes as, as you move away from a piece of light. So um, I'm gonna flip back out of this because I, while I could go in the very technical aspect of this, I just want to be able to explain it to you and so you can visually see it. And we'll actually dive into this in detail next week so you can see the quality of light change. But understand that if you meet, see where number one is, if you meter where that pink number one is, and that's at F8, okay, if you move just to twice the distance, so between the source to where that, you see where it says X, so that's, that's maybe, let's just say that's 10 feet away, okay? When you move 20 feet away, that light expands in all directions. It doesn't just double the space, it ex actually expands in all directions. So what happens is the power is actually at one fourth of the power it was, even though you just double the distance, that just making that. Now that could be the difference between a foot to two feet, like you can lose that that quickly. So understand that the closer the light is to the subject, that if you have light right on top, and I'm just gonna flip out of this just because I know this is gonna confuse the crap and scare you guys, uh, those that are not uh, you know, used to this. But we were talking about this last week that the closer the light source, the more it'll wrap around and the further like how the sun is. Now, if I go stand on that hill, <laughs> and the sun's that far away and I come down off the hill, the light quality didn't change because it's so far away that in relationship to the sun, it, it didn't change because, you know, I could have walked that, that 40 feet or whatever and nothing happened. So, but if I had a flashlight and I held it right up to my eye, boom, and, and you metered for that and you got it perfect. If I just went twice the distance, so if I was only like a couple inches away and I just went to double the distance, it would fall off. It would be one fourth of it and then you go back. So it's, it, it's something that you have to understand. We're going to talk about this in real world, but the closer you are initially, um, the light falls off dramatically. So if, if I had all this back here and I wanted to photograph, but maybe this was nasty, it was a, it was a fire hall and I didn't want to see all this, I would try to get that couple as close to the light source as possible. So beautiful, it would wrap around them, it would look great, but then would dramatically everything back there would just fall off you know, with the settings that I had and I wouldn't have to see all the garbage back there. Yeah. Um, but if they're 10, 15 feet away and, I'm, and I have my light next to me and it's throwing it across the room and, and the rest of the room is only another 10, 20 feet behind them, it's gonna show all of that. Like you're gonna see all of that. And some of you struggle with this. And it's something instead of going in the technical, like highly technical aspect of the law of the inverse square, I'm gonna show it to you so they can understand. Because at the end of the day, some of you are, again, we talked about last week, some of you are more of the creative and you just wanna feel it and go out and do it. And some of you are really caught up in the technical. You need to know the A, B, C, X, Y, Z, exactly what it is. And here's the chances that I have with you. If you're one of those people, you've already researched this. You actually read your, your camera manual and you already knew this information. I'm not attracting you into this course anyway. So uh, it's something that you want to take the opportunity and, and go beyond the scope of just looking at the technical aspects. You want to feel it so that you can make a change and know why it's happening than just knowing the, the, the algorithms or the, the equations and all like that. So for today, we're going to, Breeze, that piece of it right there, we're going to stop um, at this point. And uh, I, I know we're going to switch over to Melissa here in a second. Maybe if there's any questions that popped over. I think we've been so, I think everybody's used to us not talking about uh, or allowing questions on the series. So uh, we'll do it in the, the Facebook group. But um, I do want to transition real quick that, you know, we're just, I'm able to just give, we're just, I'm able to just give you a breeze on all the stuff inside the series. Like I'm taking a lot of information and packing it into like an hour 
uh, time frame. And what we are doing is next month, uh, first week of March, we are launching our lighting intensive workshop uh, online. Now we, we will be doing the class live twice this year uh, near our home studio here in, in Wilmington, Delaware. Uh, and those of you that want to be involved with the live, you can. Um, and I've sold out, it's been close to 10 years now that I've done this, this workshop and we've sold it out 100% every single time, uh, for the last 10 years without exception. And it's something that I would love to have as many of you on, uh, as possible, uh, with that. But, um, it's something we decided we, we realized with doing prop photographers and the podcasts and, and the webinars that we're doing that not everybody can jump in an airplane and, and reasonably get to us here in Wilmington, Delaware. And it sometimes doesn't make sense for us to jump in an airplane and go to other places because it would be cost prohibitive and we'd have to get very, very large crowds. And uh, with this technology, we learned that why not bring it to everybody into their home and they can actually consume it at their pace and be able to test and do things on their own. So what we've done is we've, we've put together a beta group and uh, we're, we're going to uh, be... Um, and, and you know, at the live class, we, 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 every single year we do it for $397, uh, that that's something that, uh, that, and again, it sells out, but, uh, what I want to do is everybody that's on the webinar series that they can take advantage. We're only allowing a few people in, um, and we're just incrementally allowing a few people each week to come into our beta group. Uh, so you might see it in the screen somewhere, uh, here. And if you don't physically see this, if you're finding us on YouTube or another uh, space, you, you need to come to profitographers.com and actually watch the replay uh, on, on our site just for you to be able to see this offer. But we are offering just for $97 for people that are interested, just a limited number of people. You can get in the online pre-launch of the class and actually be able to dialogue with us uh, in the, we have a private Facebook group where you can actually dialogue and tell us what you want to learn, what you want to know about when it comes to lighting, because we're allowing this beta group to kind of help guide and mold because we have taught this class. It's a 10 hour lighting intensive uh, that we do live. Um, like I said, twice a year. And it's just something that when we get into the online format, it allows me to be able to go more specific about topics that we couldn't necessarily cover just in the, uh, the live workshop. So, we have the ability to indefinitely go in different directions to do the lighting and show you the lighting techniques and everything that you won't be able to, to do just on your own. So um, we are limiting initially. Uh, last week we did have uh, 20 people uh, get in on that and we have actually a fewer number uh, today. So you might be seeing that on your screen. If you scroll up or down, if you're in the official webinar, you'll be able to see the, the this offer because it takes you to a very private secret page that nobody that's outside this webinar is able to see. Uh, but we do have the, the ability to bring people in, private Facebook group. You also get a copy, a free copy of our brand new Prop Photographers book that we just published. Uh, very thankful. Um, our, our book is ranked number one uh, in photography business on new releases for Amazon. And our Kindle version is actually ranked number three. So uh, there's a lot of you buying, uh, investing in the Kindle version as well. So we're very, very proud and excited being ranked number one and number three uh, in that category. Um, makes us incredibly thankful for everybody. Oh, yeah, there's the there's a little bullet point. Um, so again, we're going to be doing these every week in February. And some of you will actually see these uh, in, in a replay. Uh, so if you did miss the, the live, you'd still be able to, if we do have the offer available, uh, I'll update it on the, on the screen. But uh, once we're sold out of the pre-launch uh, people that we're having in, uh, I'm not going to be able to keep offering that because we do want to have a very limited uh, exclusive number of people. And again, so you'll, you'll be able to get the pre-launch of the course itself, be able to help dialogue. Uh, the official launch will be uh, in March, but you'll help us design and cover the topics that you feel are important to you and your business and separate you from everybody else. Uh, it is less. We're not offering it to as many people uh, this week um, that the, the 20 that I have here that we had for the first week. Um, so it is very, very limited. So if you do, if you're on the replay and you do not see the offer, then that means we did not, we're, we're not allowing any more people into the, the pre-launch. Um, and that, that course will be considerably higher than what, what you see uh, for the pre-launch of it. And you do, for the pre-launch, you do get a, a copy of our Prop Photographer's uh, book uh, as well. But um, 
again, every Wednesday, please share with your friends, family members, those people that are out there that are in photography that are struggling because photography, you know, everybody has a camera these days and we need to help separate you from everybody else. Um, but today that, that was the, the, uh, part two, as far as the series, uh, in the actual class itself in the lighting intensive class, we will take each of these pieces and dive in very, very specific just to like going over the light meter more in depth, going over color correcting in depth, uh, talking about the creative pieces. Like, well, you can compartmentalize and if you have a wedding that weekend, you'll be able to go right in and just go right to the wedding modules and learn those things. Or if you're doing a family portrait or you wanna do creative lighting or you wanna learn how to do the uh, light painting and, and other aspects, like that'll all be in there. Uh, and it'll be in bite-sized pieces, so you'll be able to handle each of the each of those pieces itself. Um, but this is a very limited uh, opportunity, so uh, some of you uh, will probably have to wait uh, until that time when we do officially launch. Uh, but it's something that we we do have the ability for you to to jump in in a pre-launch state to take advantage of that. Um, at this point, I think that's what where we're going to stop today. Um, and you know what, I'll just come out of the, um, of there real quick that again, uh, those of you that do jump in, you do get our, uh, our brand new book that Melissa and I, uh, published. And, um, it's just, again, the prop photographer's book, it's, it's a solid, you know, it's not like a thin, um, this is a deep dive on really what we do on a daily basis to separate us from everybody else. Again, we do a little over 800 headshots, professional headshots a year, all paid, uh, dealing uh, from the small mom and pops to major corporations like DuPont Company and Accenture and uh, GE. Um, we've been able, and we've had to travel outside the area in order to photograph these people, but there, there's a way to create and control your business to have that attractiveness. Uh, our Santa experience sells out every year. Uh, we did a little over 4, 140 sessions with that. Uh, that was about a, a little over $35,000 that we grossed over four days uh, doing that. Uh, we do have the SantaExperienceCourse.com. Uh, that's not released to the public right now because we have a select group of people that are in there. Um, but it is something that you can sign up. If you went there, you'd be able to plug in your email. So when we do relaunch uh, in a couple months, you'll have a limited window that if you want to learn how we, we pull that off. But uh, we're very active, very successful. We're very thankful um, doing 35 weddings a year. Um, Melissa and I are getting married next year, so we're cutting it down to 30 weddings this year. Uh, we, we book out every year with an average of uh, over $6,000 a wedding. And to think that five years ago, six, actually six years ago now, my first wedding was for $800 and uh, struggled. And, you know, back when I was uh, getting his $50 gigs and $35 gigs just to survive, uh, like so, a lot of us go through. So a lot of our classes and courses that we do uh, is really giving back to you guys to show you the path, the realistic path and what to do. It is a lot of hard work. It's a lot of dedication. It's a lot of focus. And it's not just that magic bullet because I know a lot of us are searching for that magic bullet. It's a deep dive. Like if, if you, it was great. Uh, we just got probably one of the best testimonials ever inside the, the Prop Photographers Facebook group. Uh, was it yesterday? Um, uh, Lori Kiefer, I think, uh, stated, and she was very open that the Headshots Workshop course that we have, that she thought that when she signed up for it, it was just really going to be just about, oh, how to photograph and, you know, headshots. But that was a two-day live class that we that we had rec professionally recorded. We spent a lot of money with the professional video team to be able to record it for us to make it an online course. And that first full day, that's eight solid hours that we did. Now we condensed it down, of course we edited it, uh, but it was hardcore about how we grew that business side of it as well. So it wasn't just about lighting, posing and all like that, which really was the full day two of it um, that we went over those details, but we spent a lot of time to talk about how we separate ourselves from everybody else. And that's what we take pride in is that every time we do a webinar, we do, um, the online course, we do podcasts. Even when we wrote the book, we could have made this a very shallow book and just fill the pages with random stuff that you see a lot of times. But really, this is the real deal, like the, you know, the going in and, and realistically separating yourself from everybody else. Like, and that's just how I learned 
years ago when I used to train for Century 21 Corporation, tens of thousands of salespeople and brokers and agents in that world, it was all about giving real information, usable, actionable, that you can go out today and use. Um, so I hope some of you are, are excited and that you're on board with uh, coming into the lighting intensive workshop. Uh, those of you that are on uh, live and or the replay, if that opportunity is still available, you'll see that uh, on the on the page here and be able to grab that limited opportunity um, for you that they come in part of the group to help us design and go in the deep dive because we're going to show you stuff that has helped separate us from the competition. Uh, but other than that, it was great talking to all of you guys today. We'll be in the Facebook group. So if you're not already in Profit Photographers uh, Facebook group, please come over. There's over 7,500 of us. Uh, it's creeping, I think, in the direction of 8,000 people uh, that we love to share and exchange ideas and help each other out. Again, it's all about throwing the ego out the door. It's not about that. Um, but we're, we're just excited to, to be part of this journey with everybody. And um, so we have to jump offline right now because we are actually going to a private photo shoot uh, where hair, makeup, all this design stuff, Melissa gets to be a model for the day. She's in the background going, eh. um, that um, it's a mobile salon and they're doing a huge promotion and they asked us to be the photographers uh, to do some creative stuff. And uh, they're doing a showcase bride. Um, and again, just because of the lighting technique and stuff like that, uh, we're, we've been made the, the feature photographer to, to capture all this. They did all the advertising promoting. We just get to walk in and, and take advantage of it. So uh, very lucky. So we're going to go and prep up for that. And um, if you guys have questions, just come into the Facebook group. Uh, let's talk there and dialogue more. But I uh, hope to see you in the lighting intensive uh, workshop as well. And those of you, again, that are just chiming in now, you might be on a secondary link that accidentally was set up for a 2 p.m. Um, you know, to come in and join. And we actually started this at, at 1 p.m. And that's just a software glitch. And I do apologize. I can't apologize enough. It was just caught as we were on here. We, we saw that, that. So in a couple minutes, I'm going to have to change a couple of things on the software. And then it'll be up online as a replay instantly. So those of you that have jumped on this, uh, I do apologize if you're just coming in right now. Um, you're going to need to refresh the page in about 10, 15 minutes, and you'll be able to get this from ground zero all the way up. Uh, we do appreciate everybody, all the love and support. And again, thank you for uh, helping us make uh, Profit Photographer's book uh, number one in new releases for photography business. Um, and also the Kindle version being number three. Uh, we, we appreciate all the help and the love and the support. So we'll talk to you guys soon. Again, if you're just getting here, go back, wait 10 minutes, refresh. You'll be able to grab the, the replay we just did live a couple minutes ago. So thanks again, everybody. Talk to you soon. Until we talk again, be profitable. Thanks.